Hello and welcome back to everyone that's tuned in to the American Ultra Stock Channel. Here we have the funeral edition as the USMT just lost in Mexico for the first time in quite a while, 2-0. And well, a lot of things to say. Before we dive into the player ratings, I just want to pass it over to you, Brayden. Your initial thoughts on the aftermath of that. Oh, I don't know what word to use right here where it won't be censored. So your thoughts, take it away. Well, if we had recorded this immediately after the game, I probably would have been yelling, but now I'm kind of just too depressed to yell. So, I don't know. I'm kind of just at a loss for words. That is the least inspiring USA performance I have seen since the lovely picture in my background back in Cuba in 2017. Uh, it's honestly inexcusable. Like, I don't, I don't even know where to start. None of the players were good. Half of the players in the first half, at least, I couldn't even tell if they were on the pitch. I forgot. I couldn't. I didn't notice them. The other half, I noticed them for all the wrong reasons. It, there was uh, the second half. The subs came in. Some of them brought a slight improvement, maybe. Uh, I mean, not that it could have gotten any worse, but let's be honest. There's no positives to take from this. The only positive is that the international break is done, and we're going on to club football until next month when there's another international break kind of ridiculous yeah. yeah and to be honest we heard a, a slight little crash in the background it should have been louder because the, that would sum up what tonight was so my initial thoughts are well you guys can tell by my voice the tone uh it's more like a funeral really for me uh first of all congrats to the mexicans uh, they always pop around uh, in these types of videos so you guys had to win deservedly so and i will dive into the wonderful performances before we give our our actual analysis of the match, but we do need to do the player ratings. You guys enjoy doing that. So, Brayden, Matt Turner. Uh, can I, I'm just going to give him uh, a two, maybe. I, I, on a, I actually think his distribution wasn't as bad as it usually was, which is kind of weird, but the second goal was horrible. The first goal, honestly, I can't fault him for the first goal. He jumped a little weird, but really him and his just i have to hold my hands up what a player what a strike he's in excellent form for full and excellent form for mexico i mean you could tell he was feeling himself when he tried a bike and did a rabona cross and this was when they were still up one nil in the first half unbelievable what i would give to have a striker like that in part of our pool but I, i'm just gonna give turner a two i mean he he didn't do anything good i can't remember any saves that he made that actually impressed me really i mean he just he caught the ball a couple times cool yeah, I'm going to give him, honestly, yeah, I'll give him a two. Uh, I know it sounds harsh, but overall, the guy has no leadership from the back line. We can tell that. And also, on the goal, I know a lot of people say that was not on him. And I will say it's not on him either because I don't expect him to save it. Because a really good goalkeeper, you don't need to be a great goalkeeper, but a really good goalkeeper saves that. He's not a really good goalkeeper. Never expected him to save that. So, moving on right here to the right back position where... Uh, Scali got his second match uh, under his belt, and well, we saw what we saw. Your thoughts on it? Honestly, uh, I'm looking ahead at, at the other player ratings I'm going to do. I think I may have been too harsh on Turner because compared to the field players, I actually don't think he was necessarily that bad. So I'll, I'll boost Turner up a little bit to a three. Scali's going to get a two. Chino Huerta was running circles around him all game. Uh, excellent performance from him as well. I thought he was the second best player on the pitch besides, of course, Raul Jimenez. Scored a goal as well. Very well deserved based on his performance. Uh, but we're not rating the Mexicans. There'd be a lot more positivity if we were. We're rating the Americans. Scali didn't really do anything. Uh, he drew a couple of fouls. That's basically it. I mean, and that's not really what you want from a right back. So I'm just going to give him a two. Uh, hopefully we have desk back soon, man, because the, the drop is huge. It is huge, especially in these games where we have to sort of impose our will. I always said it. I don't think that even Jedi, they really help create things. And Scali... <laughs> even much less, I mean, especially when compared to the guy that is the de facto number one in his position, huge drop off right there. And uh, yeah, I'll give him a two. I don't think Scali <laughs> looked like a Bundesliga player, but to be fair, he doesn't do that well there either. But anyways, and also guys to let you know, since this is quite early on, we will touch bases on, on the tactics and some of the more controversial things that we need to expand upon. But yeah, just moving on right here to Miles Robinson, who got an opportunity as a starter. This guy always seems to find himself in the roster, in the starting lineup, in big games. Thoughts on Miles? 
Yeah, Miles wasn't even supposed to start. Uh, McKenzie, I, I, they still didn't even explain why, but I, I guess McKenzie probably picked up a little knock in the warmups and Miles took his place. And I'm actually kind of glad that Miles took his place because I think it showed, hopefully, it showed Poch that he should never be called up to the USMNT again. I'm going to give him a zero. Horrific performance. He does nothing. Let's be real. He was horrible at the Olympics, outperformed by Walker Zerm in every aspect. If you're going to call up a washed MLS lifer center back, not counting Tim Ream because at least he had a career in Europe, call up Zimmerman instead of Robinson. He's better at literally every facet of the game, including the most important one, leadership. Robinson has none of that. I don't. I can't think of a single good thing he did. He kept passing the ball to the Mexicans. He set up Morris for disaster so many times with horrible passes. He's out of position so many times. I mean, I, I just can't stop listing the things he did wrong. Horrible, horrible. Yeah, I won't expend much on Miles. I don't think he deserves more than 10 seconds. Yeah, zero. There's nothing left to say, really. I mean, what I think about him, everyone's thinking. So, moving on to Tim Ream. I'm actually going to give Tim Ream a three, which is potential. That's the highest I've given anyone so far. And yes, he was bad. And that giveaway to Raul Jimenez for the second goal, unforgivable. However, I do want to say, the recovery that he showed to get back and even win the ball in the first place, I thought was tremendous. And I didn't expect to see that from Tim Ream. Reminder, he only had to get in that position because Robinson was playing out of position, as always. Uh, so I'll, I'll give him a slight boost for that recovery because that's something I would have expected from him a couple of years ago. I didn't think he still had it in him. And I'll also give him a slight boost for that uh, long ball he played to Jedi early on in the game. That was honestly probably the best pass we played all night and it happened in like what the fifth minute or so so a little bit of props there and he was the captain although i think it showed we really need some new leadership i guess i'll give him a three that even seems too high uh, but at least he had two good moments if only one of them was followed by his worst moment yeah i'll give him a one uh, i just think that this guy is supposed to be a leader yep yeah, just watching playing he wasn't awful although he had some bad moments but the lack of cohesiveness in today's match is insane, in my opinion. The disparity between lines, lack of coordination and communication. I mean, you expect a guy that made a career in Europe for a long time, deservedly so, to step up a little bit more in terms of organizing his back line since Turner doesn't have a voice. And uh, yeah, I'll give him a one. Yeah, props on some things, but it's better than a zero. So <laughs> that's my logic there. Moving on to Jedi Robinson. I'll give Jedi Robinson a 4, maybe 4.5. He only played the first half. I think that was a pre-planned sub at halftime, bringing Loons on since he started uh, in the first game. Same thing for Musa, by the way. I think Posh was just trying to manage the minutes a little bit. It wasn't exactly a biggest boost taking off our best player by far at halftime when we were already looking so bad. Uh, but I feel like he was one of the only ones who didn't really make mistakes from what I've noticed. Not necessarily that he did anything great besides, like I said, that one long ball that Reem did play over the top to him. Uh, I think he showed great pace and whatever to get on to the end of that. Outside of that, nothing much from him. He was pretty quiet, although I would argue him being quiet is actually better than what most of the other players did. So I'll give him the highest rating so far, which is a four. No, I agree, honestly. I, I mean, to me, he doesn't get out of a five. I mean, all players sort of start with a five. Uh, it didn't look great, but for my expectations, that that's what Jedi does. I mean, I don't mind players that are quiet and solid. I think that we would be in a lot better place if we had players like that and that know their limitations as well uh, the sub was ridiculous that was uh, peak bar halter esque uh, type of uh, you need a result you're playing bad yeah let's sub a left back i mean ridiculous <laughs> but more onto that later moving on right here to the anchor on the midfield uh aiden morris uh, got another opportunity as a cdm we if we are in the absence of tyler adams johnny didn't really impress was out due to injury morris looked decent against panama and today he had that performance also um Got the free kick that, well, it wasn't necessarily his fault, but it led to that. And how do you evaluate his match, Braden? Yeah, he anchored absolutely nothing. I'm going to give him a negative one. Uh, shout out to him for somehow breaking the barriers of ratings and getting into the negatives. Uh, I will say the free kick, I'm not even going to blame on him. That one in particular, Raul Jimenez scored. That one was on Miles Robinson for playing him a hospital pass. What I am going to blame on him is the yellow card that he got in what around the 30th minute. 
absolute idiocy. We have a free kick. He tries to be cheeky and take it quickly off a Mexican defender and try to get them a yellow card, saying, "Oh, he didn't give us space." Referee correctly says, "Screw you, play on." And then Morris just、um, completely shows his idiocy, fr- is frustrated, takes down a Mexican defender, and gets a yellow card. One of the most childish yellow cards I've seen in my life, and I think that kind of sums up the whole game for him. He he was running,、uh, he was he was at least trying to win the ball back. So I guess there's there's that. But let's be real, he got, he looked like a fool the whole game. And you guys can't say I'm not being fair on Morris. I've been so critical of him in the past, but I gave him his props when he was playing well at Middlesbrough. I gave him his props when he played well in the last camp. I said I wanted to see him get an opportunity. I was glad to see him start against Panama. I gave him his props in that game. Now he's showing the true colors of what he is. He's not a good player. He just played well against mediocre to bad level opposition. This is what he is. This is the reality. Tesman's better, Maloney's better, Adams is better, Johnny's probably even better. I don't know why this guy is in the conversation. Maybe a, a couple more good years at, at club level, maybe a move to the prem, then we'll talk. But、yeah, I don't know. I, I don't think he should be back for a while. Yeah, I mean, as a pure footballer, I think he's definitely worse than all of those that you mentioned. Absolutely, and also for a pure six. But he got the nod. I mean, he got the opportunity. And props to the guy for being on a platform where he can improve as a player, because that's needed if he ever wants to be back in the picture. That was embarrassing, really. If I, I know I had some bad matches back in my day, and I would be embarrassed by some of them. That was embarrassing. I mean. It looked like Bambi on ice at times. A ridiculous,、uh, horrible decision making to get the yellow as well.、Uh, I was impressed that he got to play it.、Uh, he was on the pitch for as long as he was.、Uh, honestly, moving on to the man that was right next to him, Gianluca Buzio.、Uh, again, got another start. It was kind of an audition for him as well uh, uh, because he doesn't get that many opportunities. And yeah, that performance. How do you see his match? Does it does he improve on a negative one from Morris? I mean, you can't exactly get worse than negative one, right? That would be even more unprecedented. I think we're gonna disagree here in terms of our analysis on Busio. I'm actually gonna give him a four、uh, as well. I-, I think when you compare him to the rest of the players, and especially Morris, by the way, the fact that Busio came off 20 minutes before Morris is absolutely inexcusable. Especially when you're bringing on. L- listen, I love Tanner Tespin. I think he was it was a good idea to bring him on. He played better, that's for sure, than the midfielders that we had. But bringing on a, a six for an eight when we're down makes no sense. Why not bring off Morris, who's already on a yellow? Whatever. We'll get more into the tactical decisions later in the video. But I actually don't think Busio was as bad as some of the other players. A, a lot of his passes they weren't necessarily as progressive as I would have liked, or what we saw against Panama. But at least he kept the ball. I, I can't really remember any occurrences where he had a stupid giveaway. He did actually get stuck in a couple of times and win the ball back. Honestly, I can remember more occurrences of that than Aiden Morris doing it, and he's supposed to be our six.、Uh, all, all things considered, I, I think Busio. I'm not even going to say he can leave with his head held high, but maybe a little bit less low than some of the other guys. Honestly,、uh, I give him a five. I'll be honest, and I'm a big critic of Busio. Okay, a lot of you guys know that, but I thought similar to a Rob. He didn't really do that much wrong, and I think the tactics were so bad. I, I know that Poch doesn't know our pull that much, but setting us up, and especially Buzi to play where he was playing, and the way the lines were moving, he was set up for failure. But he still, I think, somehow did himself a little bit proud there. I, I, I can't recall anything horrible that he did. The things that he got wrong, I'm used to seeing it, and、uh, I think overall, not a bad match from him. I think this is.、Uh, Calamity, a horrible performance, but for him, not that bad. So I'll give him a five. I think that、uh, all things considered. But moving on right here to Musa, the guy that maybe he's competing with the spot. Although、uh, Poch does tend to look like、uh, Musa is a winger. What do you think? Yeah, I'm gonna do something again unprecedented, like I did for Morris. I'm gonna give him a, a not applicable. I, I can't rate the guy. I, I couldn't even. Was he on the pitch? I I couldn't tell. It looked like we were playing with ten. I mean, he got hooked at halftime. I do think it was a pre-planned sub, like the Jedi one,、uh, but it was definitely deserved. Th- the guy completed five passes in the first half. That like. What are you even doing out there? Andres Guardado completed eleven, and he got subbed off in the eighteenth minute. It was his testimonial match. He hasn't played for Mexico in two years, and he's doing double the work at Yunus Musa. Unforgivable. I mean, we、uh, we both have been extremely critical of Musa and his position within the national team for quite some time now. I think people are starting to catch on. I do kind of like the fact that Poch moved him out wide because at least he can make less mistakes in less critical areas than he can in the midfield. 
I don't think he should be a starter for a long, long time. It just kind of feels like, listen, the best ability is availability. I've said it about him so many times. We always have a midfielder that's hurt, whether it's McKenny, Reyna, Adams, Johnny, anybody. He's always in the lineup because he's the only one who doesn't get hurt. Even if they are hurt, he can't be starting for me. Yeah, honestly, Musa rides on hype, really. And uh, this is one of the reasons why, even last, after last match, some people were raving about that goal to tap, and you have to score that credit for getting it on. But uh, I don't really expect anything from the guy, really. I I'll give him a zero. Non-existent. You would like to think that one of the hottest prospects you have, and I feel like every season, every match he plays for us, too, he keeps degrading a level. At times, we thought, oh, this is a world-class potential uh, player. As some people had that at the beginning of his career, and then it's oh, it's a very top prospect. Oh, it's a mate, and now I just feel like he's maybe an average player at best uh, in his career. Uh, non existent, ridiculous match, and uh, just straight out of his book these days. So, moving on right here to uh, let's move. I even forgot who the other player was. So, we had Brendan Harrison. Yeah, and Brendan Harrison was, was playing, who got a 7.0 on Fought Mob. So, all of you guys that love app ratings and don't watch the games and check app ratings. This is why we don't really think it's the most credible thing. I know that you're a big fan of him, but how do you evaluate his match, Braden? Listen, you guys know how much I like Brendan Aronson. I'm going to give him a 1.5. And I'll give him an extra 0.5 because he actually created the only clear-cut chance we had in the match. He played a nice through ball to Brandon Vasquez for our only shot on target. Well done by Vasquez as well to get in that situation. We'll touch on him more in a bit. But outside of that, I will say we're going to get to Malik Tillman. I, I know a lot of people, so many people were were on Brendan Aronson, and rightly so. He was absolutely disastrous. He still was better than Malik Tillman, in, in my opinion. And, and finally, at least he was, I mean, I guess at least he was running around. It seems like we say that every game for Brendan Aronson. But he actually did create something at once. I mean, we'll get to Tillman. Uh, I have some more thoughts on him. But yeah, no, it, it's just not good enough. And Aronson, let's be clear, he has had good performances for the national team in the past. Those just haven't been in the last couple of years. And I think it kind of is time for him to probably be dropped, at least for a camp or two. He, um, hopefully he can get retain his form at club level, but it's just really not enough, especially from someone who's, who's seen as a number 10. Yeah, and he's been criticized, I, I think at times, very unfairly in the past. And he got these two opportunities right here with the new coach. I thought... He would have done a little bit better to grab him. Uh, I don't think it was, I don't know, it's just frustrating to watch because I think somewhere in there, there is a player that can do better than this. But I don't know. I, I just don't see that big of a ceiling for him to improve. And I'm just, I think that he's pretty disappointed. He should be disappointed with how he did. I mean, two starts with the new coach, great opportunity to make a statement. You're already probably the most hated player in the squad now that has his fit out as never getting called up again. So I feel like she really should have done more. And moving on to Malik Tillman, I'll be honest, I agree with you. I was even more disappointing. And I didn't give my rating. I'll give Aronson a one. I gave some players here a zero. I think a one is fair. I can't give him more than that. Yeah, so you mentioned a zero. I'm going to give Malik Tillman a zero or maybe a negative 0 0.5. He wasn't as bad as Morris, uh, but that's also because he was invisible. Uh, in a, uh, what, 63 minutes of playing, Malik Tillman uh, completed as a number 10, playing more centrally. Aronson was out wide. He's in, supposed to be at the focal point of everything. He completed three passes. Three passes. I can complete three passes. Put me out there. I could do that. I, I think anyone could. I mean, we talk about all these these young guys coming up. Any of them can complete three passes in, in this game. It, it's ridiculous. Obed Vargas came off the bench and he almost completed three passes. What what are, what are you doing out here? I mean, this is a guy who gets praised as potentially the best player in the Eredivisie. And yet he just shows up to every game with a lethargic attitude. He just he seems like he sleeps walk, sleepwalks everywhere and doesn't get in any positions. I, I think the only moment I can recall from him is him trying to dribble three players in our own half. He did get around, I think, one or two of them to his credit and then just lost the ball. And I don't think he was ever seen again. Uh, maybe we should check in Johan Vasquez's pocket. Um, I'm not sure, but I, I, it's disgraceful, honestly. I, it, baffles me how a player who can be so good for his club at PSV and just show up to the USMNT with not a care in the world, no look of quality or anything. I, I don't get it at all. Yeah, I don't want to sound like Alexi Lalas. That's the last thing that I want to sound like. But 
some of the duo nationals, not all, I don't want to generalize, some of them do show up to the USMNT camps looking a little bit careless. And I feel that's the vibe that I get from Tillman. So nonchalant. I mean, I thought Gio Reyna was nonchalant, but this guy takes it to a whole new level. I mean, it's insane, really. It's like he's not playing and like he's not willing to play. He's just nowhere to be seen. So good for PSV. At times, uh, well, needs to polish. He's still young, but uh, ridiculous. I mean, if that was any other player that played in MLS and showed up with that type of performance, I would say never call that guy again. So I'll give him a zero. Can't give him, I don't think he scores any points from that match. And moving on right here to Josh Sargent. I mean, it, it keeps getting better, doesn't it? How do you evaluate his opportunity? This guy has been crying for an opportunity for such a long time. He got it tonight. Thoughts on it? Yeah, that, that's two starts in a row that he hasn't done anything. And, and I think the final straw for me, I saw some other people say it on Twitter as well. Brandon Vasquez came on and actually did something. Uh, not necessarily anything big or huge, but he actually looked like he wanted to be there. He got into positions, had, had a couple of nice moments on the ball, had a shot on target. Uh, well, obviously, we'll give our rating on him uh, later when we talk about the subs, but Sargent's going to get a zero. And I'm ready to say he doesn't deserve another USMNT call up unless he can prove it in the Prem. I, I think what we're starting to realize about the championship is that it's really not all that. I mean, we've spoken about Morris, Aronson, and Sargent, who all, I would say, put in good performances consistently in the championship. And then here, it's, there, it's nowhere to be seen. Haji Wright is also in that league. I mean, I think he's probably a, a touch above these guys, but really, he hasn't really showed much uh, in the last couple camps either. I don't, I don't even know where to say about Sargent anymore, because I, I do like the guy as a player. I mean, I bought a jersey of him we can't keep defending him, man. It's been five years. Check check Alex Calabresi's Twitter and you'll see a list of 40 players who have scored for the USMNT more recently than Josh Sargent. One of them is unemployed, by the way. Just throwing that out there. It's unforgivable. Yeah, honestly, for Sargent, I have to give him the worst rating out of all the players because I thought that he was one of the, I know that he's a forward. Maybe you can say, well, but what about the service? His movement. And just every time that he got the opportunity to be on the ball, just... It looks lethargic, and I think that overall, if you want to call Jordan Peefock ahead of him, I wouldn't be opposing to that, honestly, at this point. I mean, what else do you want? You got two starts right here, and both times, the guy that came on for you looked significantly better than you in a very limited amount of time. And uh, he he stayed on for a lot longer than I would let him on. So, moving on, maybe we need Jesus Ferreira back. That That's the state that this game brought me to. And bringing on right here to the subs who, I mean, we'll leave our analysis on Poch for later on, but he brought on Lund and Zendejas uh, at the halftime mark. Thoughts on both of them, if we can group them together. Yeah, at the time I was like, okay, Lund and Zendejas for Jedi and Musa, not exactly the subs we needed, but I'm going to give credit to both of them. I think Lund was was solid. I don't know if he was better than Jedi necessarily, and I will say he really needs to do better on that chance that he got, but hey, he got on the end of more balls than Josh Sargent did, so maybe we should put Christopher Lund up top. Who knows? I think he at least looked solid on the ball, and for as bad as the pitch conditions were uh, the, that can't be said about a lot of players that we had so uh, i'm gonna give lund a, a 3.5 I, I think and zendejas uh, i think i think we both gave him like a one or a zero uh in the last game because of his, his comments recently uh, about his his national team future that he doesn't actually have uh for mexico i'm gonna give zendejas a 10 because honestly He's the only guy who came onto the pitch and actually showed like he cared. He, he's the only one who fought for the bench. Uh, maybe it's something against playing uh, against, obviously, his other nationality, Mexico. He plays in Liga Mekis against and with a lot of these players. But when when he had that, that duel with, I don't remember who it was, the Mexican player, but something inside him just snapped. And he actually showed for the first time all game passion from a USA player. By the way, Edson Alvarez took him down in a chokehold. I don't care what anyone says. I know it wouldn't have mattered. If a U.S. player did that, they would have been sent off immediately. The the ref and the pitch, all that was a disgrace. But uh, it's a little off topic. I, I, I know it's not a real rating, a 10. Let's be honest. Uh, if it was real, I'd probably give him like a 5 or so. He actually played that ball to Lund as well. The only good service of the night. Uh, I think I like what I saw from Zendayas. He's probably the only player who actually raised his stock in this game. So I'll give full props to him. 
Yeah, uh, I mean, I completely agree with Zendejas. I thought that was a really beautiful ball that he put in, and uh, he looked good, like a sub should look. Uh, trying to do it, at least either keep it simple, or if you're a forward-going player, try to make things happen. And a lot better than the other guys that were, I can list Aronson, Tillman. He looked a lot better than them. So I'll give him a, I'll give him a five. Uh, and uh, the only reason why I can't give any higher is because, uh, well, of his comments. And uh, ultimately, I think this might even hinder us because now he might get a call up in the future. <laughs> but uh, moving on right here to Lund, I, I think that chance, you need to put it away. And there were a few moments where uh, the chemistry going back, the ball hit him, it goes out for, for a throw in. I feel like that moment, what he did well, it's the bare minimum to do well. Uh, I'll give him a one. That chance, we really need to put it away. And uh, I honestly can't give him any higher. Moving on right here to Brendan Vasquez, Haji Wright, and Tenor Tesman. They all came on at the 63rd minute. Very weird that managers have this thing where you can only make a change in the 60 or so minute. Ridiculous. But moving on, uh, analyzing them briefly right here. What do you see on the, their matches? I'm not okay. I'll start with Haji, right? Because I think it's the easiest one. I don't think there's even much to rate for him. I'll just give him a, a two. I don't really think he did much. Uh, he didn't really get as involved as I would have liked him to. Uh, Tenor Tessman, I, I think, was actually pretty solid when he came on. I mean, he was actually trying to do some things, although I will say that that Maradona attempt when he was in the corner, it, honestly, it just made me laugh, uh, which I, I guess was, was needed uh, in such a bad mood of a game. So I, I guess props for that. But Outside of that kind of dumb moment, I, I, I think he was really solid on the ball. I mean, obviously, he's a bigger guy. He's not exactly the most agile, but he was at least trying to complete some dribbles, kept the ball for the most part outside of that one one time. So I, I'm going to give him eh, 3.5. Same, same as I think I give Loons. And then for Brandon Vasquez, I'm going to give him, I don't know, I give Sergeant, what, a zero or, or something? 0 0.5. I'm going give, to give Vasquez uh, a 5 because he got into situations he actually looked like he cared maybe it's something against about playing against mexico he's a mexican-american zendayas is a mexican-american they both showed up for this game i think if pepe was still in camp he would have done the same maybe we should just call up all mexican-americans when we play against mexico it'll light a fire under them bring in jogo bring in gutierrez bring in luna all, all these guys but he actually got into a situation where he got our only shot on target and even outside of that he had a nice combination play on the wing with uh, two other players i think it i think it was actually zendayas and tesman uh, I, I think he again him and zendayas probably are the only players who upped their stock in in this game so full props to him i hope we see him ahead of sergeant in the future yeah i mean i'll start off where you left off on, on baskets i'll give him a five really can't give him any lower i mean he came on as a sub what is there really to do? The team looked ridiculous. Uh, compared to the guy that was play, play the most of the match, I have to give him a five. I mean, the sergeant looked so bad. And uh, I thought Vasquez did all right. Uh, I mean, kind of raised the stock. Uh, moving on right here to Haji Wright. So what can I give him? I'll give him, throw him a two as well. But based on what, I don't know, you tell me. It really didn't do much. Uh, and Tenor Tessman, I'm a big fan of the guy. That moment was ridiculous. But overall, kept things neat and tidy. Uh, I'm just very disappointed that Posh didn't give him more minutes, especially when Morris was playing like that. I don't get the move of putting Tessman in for Buzio as well. And that brings as well, we have Trusty. Do you want to rate Trusty? I mean, there's barely anything to rate him. Uh, I'll give him a two as Mercy. I don't know. The only thing I'll say about Trusty is I wish he started the game because Green was horrible, Miles Robinson was horrible. At least give the guy a, a chance, right? I, I mean, we wanted some rotation coming into this. Pochlin made one change and it was only out of necessity because Pulisic went home, Tillman came in for him. Why not give some of the backups a chance? They showed off the bench they deserved it more. So uh, not that we saw anything from Trusty necessarily, but hey, he didn't make any mistakes. And that's more than we can say for all the rest of them. So uh, I'll just give him a, a celebratory two and a half, I guess. Yeah, same that I see. And now it, it, it moves us to, I feel like the final take, we can just do right here a review and a rating for our coach because ultimately he's at the helm now. Uh, all the positivity, optimism, that carried us to this match. Uh, it ultimately led to that performance. Say what you will, but it wasn't great. I'm curious to see what you would give him uh, on his match rating for his second match for the USMNT as the coach. Yeah, but before I rate Poch, I just have to clarify, I'm not Poch out or anything. I'm not saying it was a bad hire. 
it was still a great hire, a great group by USSF to get him in. I still have optimism for the overall direction of the program under Poch, but we have to be objective here. And if this was Berhalter managing this game, I think people would be calling for his public execution. I'm not going to go that far, but I am going to give Poch a one out of ten. Uh, similar on par with a lot of the players uh, with which I think is kind of fitting I think a lot of the decisions were just baffling to me I mean again I mentioned the fact that he didn't make any changes besides the one that he made out of necessity that didn't really make sense they're already tired from running so much I mean he has an intensive system within training and in the games he, he, I mean so run heavy we saw what, four players get hurt five if you include McKenzie because of it Make some changes. Let their legs rest a little bit. Bring on some fresh guys who actually have the motivation to do something. And even then, even if they didn't start, rectify your mistakes and bring them on earlier. Why did Morris stay on longer than Busio? Why didn't Aronson play a full 90 back to back? He, yeah, he was. He created our only chance, but he was horrible. He lost the ball so many times. He's obviously absolutely tired because he runs his ass off every single game. I mean, I'm surprised he even has legs left anymore. I, the substitutions just don't make any sense. Bringing off our best player Jedi Robinson at halftime for for Lund, I don't, I don't just get so many of the decisions he made. Bring on a six for an eight, testament for Busio. I mentioned that not starting Vasquez, etc. You can just pick so many different little things, and it, it all adds up. And I, I don't know if there's any single thing that he got right besides maybe sending Pulisic back so he didn't have to deal with this disaster. So one out of ten, I'm still optimistic for the future. I'm hoping it gets better in the next game. Camp. Uh, but for this one, honestly, we were going to make a video analyzing the whole camp. Uh, let us know if you want to see that. I don't even know if it's necessary at this point. I don't want to talk about this game anymore. Um, I'm done. Yeah, I'll be honest. Uh, again, just want to emphasize right here at the beginning. I'm not potch out. Okay, obviously, I think it was a great hire. Definitely better than the other guy we had in here. But I'll give him the lowest rating out of everyone. I'll give him negative five, really. I mean, Honestly, absolutely shocking. And I'm not even going to be focusing too much on the lineup, which I already thought. I mean, what's the purpose of, of calling so many guys and not even rotating? A lot of them have had some fitness issues. Maybe it's due to the uh, training regime or not. Regardless, I've given the benefit of the doubt. Still, the selection was awful. And then you move on and look at the tactics. I've never seen this that unorganized in a match. Greg was ridiculously bad. I'm not comparing the two. Greg was should have never been a coach for the USMNT. But we looked completely disconnected. The defense, midfield, attack, a complete mess. A complete mess. And for all of this talk that Poch won't take anything. Poch won't take anything. He let Aronson play the full 90. He let Morris for way longer than he should have. I mean, Morris is the, the one that really baffles me. It's ridiculous. And uh, I know he doesn't know much about our roster, uh, clearly, but absolutely atrocious decision making in my opinion I did everything wrong in my opinion there's nothing he did right and uh if anything this is good so he gets a wake-up call uh, maybe he sees the pressure from the media maybe he sees that hey i need to adapt to things right here because clearly it didn't work it's embarrassing really and uh, leaving all right here uh, any final thoughts Braden? any any else anything else they want to share yeah i did just want to say one more thing kind of off the back of that uh, i think next camp is going to be really telling because I, I will give Pasha pass for this one he didn't really have a lot of time to learn our player pool i think that was evident by everything we saw i mean sticking with the same 11 calling up the same group of guys whatever now uh, i'm even going to give him a pass for for letting the players off a little bit like you said i mean some of them should have come off earlier yes but we're just going to leave that all in the past now and we're going to go into the next camp we're going to play jamaica again in the nation's league quarterfinals twice home and home and next it's going to be really telling does he really is he not going to take this is he going to call up new players i think that's what i'm hoping to see at least uh, at least a few make some statements show that this type of performance is not going to cut it i'm very interested to see the behind the crest episode as well because they always show the team talks i want to know what he says in the locker room after this game i want to see changes to the roster i want to know which players he, he thinks don't cut it anymore i think there are some pretty clear uh not ones that, that jump out but i think that's really what we can look forward to for now yeah, let's let's see if there is uh, more positivity to come <laughs> in the future. Ridiculous. I mean, the USMNT is a gift that keeps on giving. Just want to thank all of you guys that keep tuning into the channel, uh, even though we have this national team that we have. 
and let's hope that things uh, get better in the future make sure to leave a like subscribe share with your friends and please leave your comment and your thoughts on this camp i'm very curious to see the players that you guys would cross out from the list and players that you want to see and potential 11s anything and we'll try our best to reply to all of them and we'll see you next time